and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I am making really fun soap because I found these cute little uh, molds. They're like little mini bunt cakes. Aren't those cute? So uh, I was inspired by this fragrance that I'm going to use today. It's called Apple Mango Tango from Wholesale Supplies Plus. And to me it sort of smells like apple strudel or um, you know like a uh, apple crisp, that kind of a thing. It's got a it's nice. It's a good fruity flavor, but it smells more like coffee cake. So it made me think of these little bunt cake, mini bunt cakes. So I'm super excited to pour those. And I only have a couple of those, so I'm probably also going to do some donuts um, because I know I'll have more batter than I have molds. So we'll do some donut shapes and some mini bunt cakes with that uh, fragrance. And for the color, because I'm thinking apples, I have this Trial by Fire from Nurture Soap. And this is a really, really beautiful red. So I'll do a little red swirl in there and then I will do some drizzle frosting and maybe some sprinkles on top and make them just look like little, you know, cute little cakes. <laughs> I don't know why it made me think of cakes. Um, this is the apple mango tango. So I may pop some apple and mango purees in there just to, you know, go with the theme of it. Um, this will be a goat milk soap, milk and oil method that I've been enjoying doing. Um, so I think that's it. I'm going to get everything pulled together, get my hair pulled back, and let's make some really cute little bundt cake soaps today. All right, it's time to get all the additives mixed into my oils and butters here. And I already went ahead and put the fragrance in here. I have not worked with this fragrance before, but it got really good reviews. Nobody said they had trouble with the acceleration. So I went ahead and popped it in here. So along with the fragrance, I'm going to add my goat milk. And this isn't quite as much goat milk as normal because I've got my baby food here to represent the apple mango tango portion. I found it's, it's a mango, apple, and avocado baby food. And that is the only ingredients in here, so I thought that sounded really good. So we'll put that in here. So between the goat milk and the baby food, I water discounted from the lye solution to make room for these. Anytime you add a puree, you want to subtract it, treat it as a liquid portion in your soap. So factor that in. All right, smells good in here, very fruity. So I'm excited. I got my little donut molds and my little bunt cakes off to the side on trays so that I can move them after I pour. I've made that mistake before using little silicone molds and I just had them sitting on the table and then you're just stuck if it because you can't move them because they're floppy. You have to wait till it hardens up. So, all right, got that. Now my dry ingredients, which is my colloidal oats and my kale and clay, two tablespoons each. We'll get this blended in, let the dry ingredients really absorb in there, and then we'll come back with the lye solution and get rolling and get these little guys in the molds. I'm so excited to make these today. All right, it's time to move forward with my lye solution, which has cane sugar, tussa silk fibers, and sodium lactate mixed in here. And... Uh, We'll get this to it just emulsion and then split off from my wonderful little red swirly color and then the hope here or the goal is I'm going to do an in the pot swirl um, so that just each little donut and cake mold will have a nice little swirl of color in it to you know get the whole theme across this fragrance right now smells very appley I mean it's very nice it's very pleasant but the mango tango is less the apple is dominant Oh, there it's caramelizing with the fruit puree and the milk in there um, the fragrance is not supposed to discolor but with the fruits it may be more on the beige side just because of all those wonderful natural sugars all right we'll call that emulsion and split off here for my red this trial by fire from nurture soap that I'm going to grab it is so gorgeous look at that color it is just this is a fab of a color fabulous all right I'm going to just whisk that and get it started then I'll blend these up to a light trace do it in the pot swirl and we'll get to pouring
All right, it's time to unmold these. <laughs> it went a little bit faster than I anticipated. So they were a little messy getting them in the mold, but uh, I will show you how I'm gonna even out the surface areas and this it's gonna be fine because this is the bottoms of the bars anyway. So look how beautiful this color turned out. It was very dark yesterday. Um, when I was pouring the soap because of the heat reacting with the fruit puree and the goat milk, but look how it lightened up. Aren't those beautiful? I'm tickled with these. So with this little bottom, kind of rough bottom, let me show you how I am going to tackle that. So first of all, I'm gonna, cause it has a little sharp edge here, and I'm just gonna use this tray. Uh, to catch my scraps because nothing goes to waste. I'll put these in my shavings bucket. I'm just going to go around the rim here. All right, so that gives it a nice smooth rim, but I still have an uneven bottom. So I have this soap planer and it has a very sharp blade on it. You want to be really careful using these. And I'm just going to run this across my planer to smooth out the bottom so it'll sit really nice and flat. So any of my donuts or um, these little bunt cakes that have really rustic looking bottoms that would make them kind of rocky, I will run them across here and clean them up. So let's get the rest of these unmolded. Oh, these smell great too. Um, and after we unmold these, I made another batch of soap, the oils and the lye. I split it in half because I don't need as much. And I'll talk you through what I'm gonna do. We'll pour the second half of our donuts and um, some of that is going to be for a drizzly frosting on these. I want to do a cold process drizzle frosting on these. So that's what's coming next. But for now, let's keep getting these out of the mold. These are all different molds here too. So, oh, that one's pretty. I love that they're um, different styles. All right, so that one is, if you can see, it's just cut, kind of got some little bumps. It's uneven. Uh, it's pretty smoother on the outside, so I don't need to use my vegetable peeler, but I am going to run it through the planer here. Sometimes just one pass will do, yep. And that just made it nice and flat, so it's going to sit really well and flat. Ah, oh, so cute. All right, let's try this mold. Each one of these bunt cakes, so there's uh, t three different styles of bunt cake per mold. Dust off the crumblies. Oh, that one's pretty. The little details. Oh, these are happy little cakes. All right, and again, this one has like a little um, roughness, so I'll go ahead and run it through my planer here. And it really doesn't take off that much. It's just teeny little bits, but it just, it just flattens it out nice. All right, let me, um, let me grab my donuts here and we will unmold a donut because those I poured those last and they got pretty rustic looking on the tops or actually the bottoms I should say uh, because these are going to be sitting down on wet soap when I pour it I'm not so concerned about the unevenness in fact that might actually help it have some grippiness but aren't they cute they kind of I don't know it almost has like a cinnamon color let me see if we have any others. Let's see, this one had a little color swirls in it. There we go, oh, cute. So, all right, I gotta get all my donuts unmolded and get these unmolded and then we'll move on to the next step.
right, I'm ready to get rolling with the second half of my donuts. Uh, this is half a batch of what I made yesterday. Uh, same, all the additives are in here. Lie, duplicated everything because I had so much extra batter, I actually was able to pour this little loaf off the extra. I'll slice that at the end too. Um, so I'm excited. I got a lot of soap yesterday, but I'm like, I need to do a half batch. That was a little too much batter for all the molds I had. But uh, so this is split and I have some off to the side that I will mix um, later or actually tomorrow when I pop the donuts out, I want to do a cold process drizzle. So anyway, that's why everything's smaller today. We're gonna work in smaller bite-sized pieces and the fragrance is already in here and I'm just gonna blend a little less aggressively, hopefully keep things a little slower today. Um, that was definitely just my blending the fragrance. I don't think it, it accelerated. I think that was just me blending and having to pour so slowly. So um, I wouldn't, you know, discourage anybody from trying that fragrance. It smells really nice. So all right, let's get this blended up and get our color in here. And then. Uh, there we go, caramelizing. Um, after I pour the donuts, I will pop the top half on and let them sit overnight. And then tomorrow we'll get on with the frosting and decorating of our little apple cakes. There we go. And again, I'll just do an in the pot swirl today. Just trying to duplicate what had going on yesterday. So we'll do titanium dioxide in this bucket and this absolutely gorgeous trial by fire in this bucket. Let me just say this color is beautiful. All right, we're gonna blend lightly, go lightest to darkest. the next morning and I'm ready to unmold my little completed donuts here and then I'll show you how I clean up. I kind of smushed them down and they had some oozing which I'm actually glad about because I really wanted the two halves to adhere really well together. So let's go ahead and just pop these out and <laughs> okay so you can see this thickened up and got a little rough so they look a little different but they both smell great. So anyway, it's got this little lip on it. So I'm gonna just crack off what'll just come off. And then I have my little vegetable peeler that I'm just gonna run around and smooth off these edges so they're nice and smooth. And I will do this on all of them. And then when I get these all unmolded and cleaned up, we're gonna come along and make some frosting. I'm trying to decide if I want this 
I think I'm going to do this as the top and that smooth part will be the bottom. But anyway, we'll come through with our frosting. I might glaze it and frost. I'm still thinking about how I want to do this. Put some sprinkles on top. So that'll be for the donuts. And then I have these other little um, bunt cakes that I got poured yesterday from the lot. So, oh, they're so cute and they smell so good. So I will use my little planer again today to get these nice and flat on the bottom. So I'm gonna get everything prepped and we'll come back when it's time to do frosting. it's time to get frosting all these wonderful little goodies here I'm so excited these just are making me happy so what the plan is I have a very tiny little batch of soap over here to mix together I've got my lion oils um, and for the donuts what I'd like to do if everything's behaving now this uh, fragrance is I'm finding it moves along at a decent pace so it's not a slow trace but um, you don't want to putz around with it. <laughs> so if this is behaving, I'm going to blend this very gently. I would like to dip this in the white portion. I'm going to do the same colors, the red and the white. I'll dip this in the white like a glaze and let them sit. And then um, for my little bunt cakes, I want to do a drizzle of the red and the white on top. And then I'll come back in the donuts and drizzle. But I want to glaze the donuts first, drizzle, and then I have, um, and if it, I'm going to see how it looks, but I might do these. These are very tiny little sugar pearls. There we go. Can you see? I just got these at the wedding decorating aisle at my local grocery store. They're just sugar pearls, so they just dissolve in water, and they're just pretty. So I might sprinkle those on. I also have this gold-colored sugar that I also got in the cake decorating aisle at the grocery store, so it's just sugar. Um, but on top of a, pro of a soap loaf that goes through uh, gel phase, the colors can migrate when you get colored sugars. But these are not gonna go through gel phase because they're just gonna sit out at air temperature. So I might do a little gold sprinkle on my bunt cakes just to make them shiny and pretty. And again, it's just sugar, so this will just dissolve the first couple times you use it. I also have some glitter here. I just kind of have a little arsenal of toppings that I'm gonna grab kind of as the mood strikes me. I'm gonna see how they look after we get the frosting and the drizzle on there. And then we'll come through with our little toppers here, you know, depending on how I'm feeling. I might use any of them or all of them, or we'll just see. I wanna see how the frosting looks before I commit to these, but I've got them off to the side, ready to use if, I, if I'm going to do that. So that's that. Uh, here is my tiny little bit of lye and my tiny little pot of oils and I'm just going to hand stir this to emulsion. I'll split off and do the little red and the white colors and we'll get to moving on. And again, this soap has all of the same additives, uh, goat milk and all of the same additives as the soap. This is just half of the batch that I split off yesterday. So this is not a special recipe for this. 